Today on Supernova, we discover how saving the planet can save our night sky. Plus, we pull an all-nighter at a Messier marathon. And we fly a kite with the Cosmic Herdsman. Welcome to Supernova. I'm Eric Dunn. For thousands of years, people have marveled at the wonders of our night sky. But today, a growing number of people can no longer see its true beauty from their homes. The answer is the astronomical equivalent of a dirty word, light pollution. The International Dark Sky Association defines light pollution as any adverse effect of artificial light, including sky glow and energy waste. Several factors are to blame for light pollution. Sometimes too much light is used. Other times, light isn't even necessary. Or where it is needed, it's broadcast out in all directions, when it really only needs to point down. Today, we're speaking with Mark Eburn, who heads up a light pollution abatement program for the RASC. Light pollution affects astronomy in a, in a fairly large way. Um, the simple enjoyment of the night sky, uh, even without a telescope, just to go out and, and see if you can see the planets or constellations is really hindered by, by light pollution. To see the Milky Way is, is pretty amazing to see. It, it is awe-inspiring when you're able to sit back and just look out and see this mass of stars and light that go through our sky at night. And unfortunately, a lot of people living in the city don't get to see it. When it comes to, to the public and, and you know people ask, well, what can I do once they understand that there's, there's a lot of things that you can do. We encourage people to install motion sensors, to use energy efficient light bulbs, to only use light where it's needed, to provide evenly distributed light, and to shine lights down, not up. And if you go down to your local hardware store and simply ask the question, what's available to use a, a full cutoff light, they were very happy to show me that there is an International Dark Sky Association approved light that you can easily install and it does make a big difference. So this is the old light that we had taken out. It's a clear glass bottle or bulb on it, but it does broadcast light in every direction. We changed it into this, it took about 15 minutes, and now that light is all pointed down and you can see that it won't change any of the, uh, the needed light that's there, but there's no light that's uh, wasted. We can also participate in outreach programs like the Globe at Night. Globe at Night is a campaign to get people out measuring light pollution in their area. The idea is to locate the constellation Orion and to record the magnitude of visible stars. The number of stars that can be seen will teach people how the lights in their community contribute to light pollution. Another great program is Earth Hour. On March 28th, millions of people in thousands of cities turned off their lights for an hour. Earth Hour is designed to encourage action on climate change to help reduce the effect we have on global warming. But it's also a fantastic opportunity to curb light pollution, even if it's just for one hour, to observe the beauty of our night sky. The effects of light pollution extend well beyond astronomy. It's a serious environmental concern that wastes money and resources. But each of us can combat light pollution. Simply by uh, choosing the right lights uh, and, and making a conscious effort to a, be aware of light pollution and then take action to, uh, uh, to reduce it. If we all make even a small change, the overall effect can be a big difference. Light pollution might drive some observers out of their minds, or at least out of the city, but you can still see some pretty cool stuff from one of your local parks. Today we're in Chaldicott Park in Vancouver, participating in a Messier marathon. My name is uh, Howard Trotsche, and I'm a professor of physics at uh, Simon Fraser University. Charles Messier is a very interesting character. So uh, he was a comet hunter at a time in the late 18th century when comets were a really big deal. And so as he's looking for comets, he keeps finding these little sort of fuzzy patches in the sky. We call them faint fuzzies today. And they're not comets. And just 
not interested in them because he was looking for comets. So he made this catalog to tell other astronomers, don't bother with these things, they're, they're boring. Today there are many, many catalogs uh, of uh, deep sky objects, but Messier's catalog still ranks among everybody's favorite because they're among the most beautiful objects. And so uh, we say M for Messier and then we give the number from one to 110. Messier 45 comes to mind, that's the Pleiades. Gorgeous, gorgeous uh, wintertime cluster. Uh, Messier 42, that's the Orion Nebula. Uh, Messier 51, another one of my favorites, the Whirlpool Galaxy. Turns out that in springtime, middle to late March, you can see all 110 objects in the catalog in one night. And so it's kind of a mark of a, an accomplished amateur astronomer to find all 110 in, in one night. And so that's, that's the marathon. There are like really critical periods during the night when there are many, many objects that you have to see in a short period of time. And so uh, it's important to plan ahead of time and uh, work out a detailed schedule. And uh, a lot of people will get very, very close. They'll break 100, I think, sort of, you know, fairly, fairly routinely. If they're doing it you know, the old fashioned way by star hopping uh, and they know their stuff, they can, I think they break 100, 100 without uh, so much difficulty. Hi, my name is Lee Cummings, and uh, these two are my two telescopes and my binoculars in behind, and they all managed to fit into my mini. <laughs> my name is Doug Montgomery, and this is my 16 inch Star Master. Uh, my name is Gord Farrell. I'm the editor of the newsletter for the local astronomy club. This will be my first Messier marathon. I've done probably half a dozen. Uh, I've been to about three Messier marathons. I've seen about eight objects, uh, Messier objects, in the same night. Probably be about 15 or 20. Uh, mind you, that's cheating with a computer guided telescope. I, I've seen 30 objects and doing a Messier marathon. My goal would be 50. Um, maybe double it, like 16. That would be nice. Uh, the Orion Nebula is probably one of my favorites. M5, M3, M2. I like the stuff in Cygnus, uh, the Cygnus area of the sky. So you've got the dumbbell, the ring. The Messier uh, Marathon gives you a chance to compare many different kinds of objects, and they represent um, so many different uh, beautiful and, uh, and important things that go on in the universe. That it, that's really one of the, the joys of the marathon, is that, is that comparison of one kind of thing with another. Why do I do Messier Marathons? Uh, I love astronomy, I can't get enough of it, and I'm a night owl, it's a perfect combination. So staying out all night, uh, even if I'm alone, Better with a few friends is just uh, kind of a great, great experience. Each spring, the herdsman rises in the east, his stars twinkling merrily above the city lights. Botes is a kite-shaped group of stars that seem to follow the Big Dipper. The bottom of the kite is Golden Arcturus, the brightest of the northern stars, fourth brightest in the sky. It's far from the ecliptic, yet the unwary often confuse it with a planet, for its hint of yellow is common to objects of our solar system. Try your binoculars on Epsilon and a surprise awaits. The star is an Arcturus copy. Both are type K, but at eight times as far, Epsilon's golden color is hard to spot with the unaided eye. A larger telescope finds additional wonders here, for Epsilon is a double star with a wonderful emerald-colored companion. Just outside Botes is the mighty globular cluster M3. With binoculars, it might look like a faint fuzzy, but in larger scopes, it is a glorious city of stars with uncounted points of light. Look for the herdsman from spring through fall, where he'll eventually set in the west. It's a shame that star parties are often held far away from city lights, but we can all help to curb light pollution. For more information, visit the RASC website. Thank you for watching Supernova. I'm Eric Dunn, wishing you clear skies.